ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر والها وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين الحمد لله و praise due to Allah عز وجل we praise him we glorify him we seek refuge in him from the evil within us and from the evil around us alhamdulillah this is the first juma after the blessed gift of the month of ramadan that allah gave us and on this occasion where we gather together as a community after ramadan perhaps this is the first time after the eid that we have gathered in such not large numbers the most critical question for every believer at this moment is looking ahead beyond ramadan we came out of this blessed month may allah accept everything we did in this month and forgive us for our shortcomings in this month but now looking forward the most important question in the minds of believers should be how do you maintain consistency beyond ramadan beyond anything that you do because the most important fundamental question in deen is this idea of consistency in arabic the, the word for consistency is istiqama Istiqamah is a great teaching of Islam. It's something that's so serious. All of us look at think about your lives in the past, you know, 30 30 days in Ramadan. Look at how you were. Look at your schedules. Think about the kind of energy you had. How much effort you put into coming to the masajid, reading Quran, doing khatmas, praying the qiyam al-layl and tarawih. You did things you pushed yourself more than you ever pushed yourself before if you were doing the right thing. Most Muslims, most believers will say the same thing. They had this energy you did not find outside of Ramadan. So you built this incredible fortress. The most important thing now is to capitalize on what you built going forward. So Allah says, "Wala takunu kallati naqadat ghazlaha min ba'di quwwatin ankatha." He says you should never be like the seamstress the one who weaves with one hand he or she is weaving something great and then with the other hand unweaving would anybody want to be in a situation like you're building an incredible structure and building putting brick after brick but with the other hand taking the bricks away so nobody wants to lose what you built in Ramadan so the most important thing is let's make an effort and an intention to continue some of that consistency beyond Ramadan So that idea is called istiqama. It should be very frightening for all of you. Look at where you are now or where you were right after Ramadan. Do you want to be in that same state you were before Ramadan without iman or at a period of weakness again? And then when next Ramadan comes you're back at the low. Nobody wants to be like that. This command for istiqama is a command in the Quran. And it's a command that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam took so seriously. One time Abu Bakr as-Siddiq he came to the messenger of Allah and he noticed there were some gray hairs in his beard and he said to him ya rasul Allah qad shibta oh messenger of Allah you have started to gray there were just a couple of hairs and Abu Bakr noticed 
that there are signs of aging. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Ya Abu Bakr, Qad shayyabathni hud wa akhawatuha. What made my hair turn gray, Surah Hud and its sister Surah. So he said that, and people, scholars think about, okay, what is it about Surah Hud? Some say, well, maybe it was the Ahwal al Akhirah, the states of the Day of Judgment that it describes. Some say maybe it was um, the destruction of the previous nations that really bothered the Prophet and got to him, made his hair turn gray. But Ibn Abbas, he says, Ma nuzilat ala Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama fi jami' al Quran ayatan ashadda alayhi wa shaqa alayhi min hadhi al ayah. He said there is not a single verse in the entire Quran that was revealed upon the Prophet that was more difficult on the Prophet than this one verse. And that verse is from Surah Hud. What is that verse? It's the verse for istiqamah. Allah says, Fastaqim kama umirt. Allah says, have istiqama, O Messenger of Allah, and the believers who have repented along with you. Allah is commanding the Prophet to be steadfast and have this quality of istiqama, which is maintaining your gains. Whatever you're doing, maintaining that, continuing that, being perseverant, being consistent, being steadfast. That's something very difficult for human beings that the Prophet was very worried that there would be believers not able to maintain istiqama, Because the command was not just for the Prophet, he probably can. But he definitely surely can. But what about the believer? وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكْ So that bothered him a lot that maybe there will be people from my ummah that will fall short and not be able to maintain this consistency. That is why he advised his companions always about consistency again and again in his life. He kept telling people that أَحَبَّ الْأَعْمَالِ one of the teachings he taught his companion, he said, look, Allah loves those things that you do consistently even if they're few. So it's far better for you to keep doing things rather than doing a lot at one time and then stop doing. That's all about istiqamah. It's all about maintaining what you are doing. So that's the critical, at this critical juncture, all of us need to look at our life and we need to try to maintain some sense of what we built in Ramadan going forward. There are two great gifts this Ramadan. And they are tremendous gifts. If you realize what those gifts were, then you know you have everything. The first gift was the gift of taqwa. We know Ramadan is a month where Allah said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The purpose of Ramadan was to gain taqwa. And taqwa is that awareness, that closeness to Allah Azza wa Jal. If you did things right, you must have discovered this closeness to Allah Azza wa Jal that you did not experience before. You must have discovered the fruits of that state of taqwa, that state of discovering Allah. We discovered the place of Allah in our lives in Ramadan. We were hungry, we continued to fast. We were sleepy, we got up and came to the masjid. We wanted to sleep at night, but we forced ourselves to do, to push ourselves. So in Ramadan, it taught us how to be close to Allah. It taught us the real position of Allah in our lives and that was something incredible. That gift is so incredible of discovering Allah. If you only hold on to that gift, every problem will be solved. Ibn Ata'ullah, he said, فَأَيُّ شَيْءٍ فَقَدَ مَنْ وَجَدَ اللَّهِ وَأَيُّ شَيْءٍ وَجَدَ مَنْ فَقَدَ اللَّهِ He said, the one who finds Allah, the one who finds Allah, what has he lost? No matter what you're going through around the world, if you have Allah on your side, you haven't lost anything. And on the flip side, the one who has lost Allah, doesn't have the position of Allah in his life, doesn't have that relationship with Allah, has not discovered taqwa, what, per what has that person gained? Even he could have millions of dollars or he could have so many fortunes. That person who doesn't have Allah, doesn't have anything. So that's something incredible. This month we discovered who Allah was. We discovered His role in our life and we discovered that link with Allah Azza wa Jal. If we hold on to that, all of our problems will be solved. All of our problems, including what's the terrible things that are happening around the world in Gaza. You know, this was a time where we were, it was such a painful time. Our Eid must have been a very painful time for many of us. How do you celebrate when what is going on is going on? How do you put clothes on your, your children's bodies, new clothes? How do you give them gifts? when your babies and our children and our brothers and sisters are being disfigured, 
being killed, being burned to death, and so on and so forth. But everything that's happening in Gaza, how many thousands of people dead, you know the solution to that is not in the hands of any human being. The solution to that problem will not be from the Muslim governments, it will not be from the UN, it will not be from the president of this country, only Allah, the source of everything, source of all power, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, He can solve the problem. And that is why maintaining taqwa, maintaining that link with Allah is all you need. Be independent from human beings and link yourself with Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why the kalima is la ilaha illallah, la ilaha first, illallah second. First you negate, first you become hanif like a Ibrahim. Ma kana Ibrahim yahudiyan wa la nasraniyan. Walakin he had two quality. Hanifan muslima. What is hanif? Hanif is someone who rejects everything in the world other than Allah. All man-made authorities, all man-made institutions. He has no hope, he has no trust in anything else in the world. He places trust and submission to Allah Azza wa Hanifan Musliman is the Ibrahimic model that we need to follow. And that is encapsulated in the kalima. La ilaha illallah. So if we discover that taqwa, we discover something amazing. The second thing, the gift of Ramadan we discovered was the power of unity. So we discovered the power of one Allah and then we discovered the power of one Ummah. As Allah said, Inna hadihi ummatukum ummatan wahida wa ana rabbukum fa'budun. Look at how you were in the Masjid. Look at how, how many incredible things every Masjid was achieving in Ramadan because of the unity. Thousands of people getting together, everyone banding together. Look at what you did. I'm not sure, familiar with the details of this community, but I'm, I'm sure you achieved many great things. You raised incredible amount of funds and you were able to expand and build upon these institutions just from the power of unity. One person is doing something, it only has a certain effect. But when everyone comes together in ranks, in shoulder by shoulder, then everyone contributes and the power is amplified. So you discover the power of unity in your communities. If you discover the power of the ummah in the world, then really there's nothing that can stop us. And that is the most frightening thing for the Zionists, for all the enemies of Islam, the scariest thing for them is the idea of the Muslim Ummah. If you just imagine, yes, we're sleeping, yes, we're not doing anything, but you can look at the glass as half empty or half full. If it's half empty, you can see all the failures, look, the Muslims are worthless, we are doing nothing. But if you look at it from another angle, hey, the Ummah is sleeping. We have 57 Muslim countries. We have almost 2 billion population. We're a quarter of all human beings in the world. We have the largest standing armies in the world. We have countries with nuclear weapons. We have so much. It's just we're sleeping, we're emasculated. When a time comes when the ummah wakes up, that's the scariest thing for the enemies of Allah Azza wa Jal. So look at it from that angle. All we need is to link ourselves with Allah and we need to be united. And when the ummah is united, incredible things will happen inshallah one day. May Allah forgive all of us. May Allah solve the problems of the Muslim Ummah around the world. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'iri al-Muslimin fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-Ghafuru rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabihi al-kareem so looking forward, we're reflecting and trying to find some direction for the next 11 months, trying to maintain some consistency of what we built in Ramadan. This consistency is called istiqamah. And as I mentioned, Allah commands istiqamah in the Quran. Allah wants us to maintain things. Allah wants us to be steadfast. Allah wants us to maintain consistency in everything that we do, especially with our Iman. So that is in the Quran in verse after verse. Um, one time Sufyan ibn Abdullah, a companion came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from far away. And he said to the Prophet, he was, he wanted to cut to the chase. He said, Ya Rasulullah, قُلْ لِي فِي الْإِسْلَامِ قَوْلًا لَا أَسَلُ عَنْهُ أَحَدًا غَيْرَ O Messenger of Allah, give me one thing, one piece of advice. I will never need anything else after that. 
One piece of advice, I will never have to talk to anyone after that. I will never have to ask anyone else after that. And what were the famous words he said to them, to him? He said, Qul amantu birlahi thumma istaqim. He said, stand up and say, I believe in Allah, and then have istiqama. That was the most important piece of advice the Prophet was able to give to that person who was just looking for one parting advice to live by for the rest of his life. All you need is Allah Azza wa Jal and istiqama. Maintain that. Inna ladina qalu rabbuna Allah thumma istiqamu. In the Quran, those who say our Lord is Allah and then after that they have the quality of istiqama. It's not enough just to believe because belief comes and goes. Our iman goes up and down. But the second part we have to work on is istiqama, maintaining that steadfastness, maintaining some consistency in that belief, never letting that iman go. So how do you do that? The good, big question is, how do you maintain istiqama in your iman and in your, your connection with Allah? There are many ways, but it's just you have to work hard at it. So just two things I'll share with you and we'll end with that. One way is um, for istiqama in your life, you have to make dua. You have to make dua. So you make dua for istiqama. Allah teaches you a dua in the Quran. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da id hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al wahhab. It's a beautiful dua. Allah says, He teaches us the Rabbana la tuzik O oh Allah, our Lord, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided them. This is a dua for nothing other than istiqama. Ya Allah, when you give us hidayah, don't let us lose that hidayah. Make us, keep us steadfast on that. Help us maintain consistency on that. Let us not deviate from that. This is one of the most powerful duas you can make for istiqama. Um, one of the companions, he came to Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet wasallam, after he passed away. And he asked her, Ya Umm ya um al-Mu'mineen, مَا كَانَ أَكْثَرُ دُعَاءِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا كَانَ عِنْدَكِ He said, look, when he was in your house, صلى الله عليه وسلم, what was the most frequent dua that you heard, you, hear, you, you heard him make in your particular house? We just want to know what you heard from him the most. And she said it was a dua for istiqama. It was a, it was a version of, he, this was the dua. He would say, يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِي عَلَى دِينِكِ O oh, fluctuator of the heart, keep my heart firm on your deen. It was a dua for istiqama. It was an interpretation of that dua. Rabbana la tuziqulu. But it was the, the version of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So the dua is the most important thing. Keep asking Allah for steadfastness, for maintenance, for consistency in your iman, in your religious practice. So dua is very, very important. And number two, Quran. Keep reciting Quran. What was the secret of Ramadan? The secret was the kalam of Allah Azza wa Jal. Every night you heard the Quran recited beautifully. The great Quran came to this community. And you were hearing the words of Allah. It had an effect on your heart. If you stop hearing those words, what is going to happen to your heart? So keep reciting Quran. Keep listening to those words. Keep having programs in your masajid dedicated to the Quran. Keep having Qiyamul Layl. It's all about the Quran. The kalam of Allah is the best remedy for istiqama. The more you hear the kalam of Allah, the more you think about it, the more you understand it, it will maintain that istiqama. That's why Allah says about Quran, In huwa illa dhikrun lil alameen. It is nothing but a reminder for all people in the world. In huwa illa dhikrun lil alameen liman sha'a minkum an yastaqim. For those who want istiqama. That's what this verse means. This is a reminder. Something that wakes you up, a dhikr for your hearts, this Qur'an. For those who want that steadfastness, who want to follow the straight path. لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يستقيم. So may Allah give us istiqama in our lives. May Allah forgive us for all of our trespasses and our sins. May Allah rectify the situation of Muslims around the world. May Allah forgive the Muslims around the world. Forgive our shuhada, accept them as shuhada. May Allah Help the situation of the Muslims in Gaza and the Muslims all around the world who are suffering. Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqa wa ruzukna tiba'a. Wa arina batila batila wa ruzukna ishtinaba. Allahumma tawafana muslimin. 
والحقنا بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا مفتونين اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا وجعل الحياة زيادة لنا من كل خير والموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك عمن سواك اللهم آمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين